each of the greatest players in the game, including this year's fewest stars. 69 cents with any fry purchase, plus a chance to win autographed NHL merchandise. <laughs> well, the biggest applause we've heard so far in this game for the mascot. Well, Gary, what's up? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, in that first period of play, I mean, it was pretty obvious that these fans were not too thrilled with what was being on the ice, what we were seeing on the ice. There was an awful lot of trapping, and for the people that believe that these are skilled teams, yes, they are skilled teams. This team, both of these teams, they can skate, they can handle the puck, they can pass the puck, but you're not going to see a great deal of that when both of them are trapping the way they do. It's like New Jersey Devils back a few years ago playing themselves out there. And that's the huge round of applause for the mascot. <laughs> uh, at least, uh, I thought, and you pointed it out, the, the Czechs uh, are at least crashing the net when they get a chance to. Uh, the Russians didn't even really seem willing to do that or weren't able to. Well, we're starting to see a little bit of that Czech emotion that we talked about at the start of the game. I mean, I think this is a little bit more of an intense team than what we've seen in the past. And this Czech team right now want this gold medal, I think, you know, so badly to be able to beat this Russian team. And the, the other point is, Gord has mentioned earlier in this show, for the Czechs ever to win a gold medal here, and we have four different teams in the last four years, yet that's all about parody. All right, and a thunderous round of applause for the mascot uh, as we throw to Gord Miller. What's up, Gord? Maybe the worst ever, boys. Uh, other scores today, Slovakia beat Ukraine 5-1 in the second half of the relegation series and then won the shootout 2 nothing. Slovakia actually brought its men's senior national team coach in to coach in that game. So Ukraine goes down, Belarus comes up. Finland beat Kazakhstan 9-1 to win the seventh place game and Switzerland leads Sweden 2-1 in the fifth place game. They're in the first intermission, that game being played in Umia. So we better get this guy off the ice. <laughs> See, now that's what happens when you tailgate. <laughs> well, if the Russian coach, as Bob McKenzie was referring to in the first period, was extremely verbal down on the bench, then I imagine that that will be even more intense early in this second period as he's trying to spark his hockey club. And we will start off the second period with the teams at even strength. Yaroslav Polik almost looked as though there he was having a chuckle to himself. Now the Russians, or actually the Russians have never won back-to-back -back gold medals, but the Soviet Union, the last time they won gold medals back-to-back -back at this tournament, 1983-84. And they are trying to pull that feat here. It will be the first time ever for the new country of Russia to win two goals in a row. And working it around is Smirnov. Shvitki along the board. Works it up for Smirnov. Back for Shvitki. Looking to the front of the net. Shvitki comes around, trying to tuck it in there at the side. Schmid holding his ground. See the Russians right away. We're trying to be more aggressive in front of the net. Havlak couldn't pick it up. And back comes Schwitke. In over the blue line. Walking in. One end to the other. Literally crashes into the boards. Puck kicked ahead there. Tereschenko knocked down. Pardon me, as Tereschenko back up. Tried to get it in front for Schwitke. I think the Czech defenseman could like hurt himself on that play. And he wants to get off the ice. Vicky being tied up there by Kublak. Puck comes back. Esipov with a shot. Drifted that one wide. Belanded. Bazicek gets it up around the boards and out. Kublak's having a real difficult time getting to the bench. And it finally gets there. Puck cleared up ahead, almost connecting with that long pass. Alemnikov was right up there at the line. It's on the change again. 
Swoboda spun around, gets it back in front, Kraft right in there. Alemnikov starts back for the Russians. Clears it up ahead, Lappin going in after it. Kersev gets it up ahead, Civic couldn't catch up. And Yindra clears it up, out of play. Two minutes, or one minute and 59 seconds into the second period. 0-0 zero, zero the score. Take a look at the scoring summary from the first period. It's brought to you by Gatorade. Is it in you? No scoring. Shots on goal, 11-8. Dennis Spitsky, who plays for the Barry Colts in the Ontario Hockey League and was forward his first-round draft pick, tried to maneuver his way to the net, but then ended up losing an edge and went crashing into the boards. He was the 12th overall pick in last summer's NHL draft. He is playing in his third World Junior Hockey Championship, entered the tournament as a 17-year-old. Trying to move in is Fedorov there, back of the net. Yindra. Banks it up, Fedorov gets it out ahead. Athan Isenkov couldn't get set for a shot, and it's pushed out. Denisov clears it back in. Schmid leaving it there for Yindra. Yindra, long shot. Safranov knocks it down, clears it up quickly. Muratov dumps it in. Kuma moving up there to four check. Big number 29 for the Russians. Couldn't get to it. And here's Hayek. Moves it up ahead. Irgul in over the blue line. Stops and shoots. Right on, and Brzezgalov hangs on. Take a look between the boards after one period. Brought to you by Molson. It's a Canadian thing. Well, the battles won were in favor of the Czechs. Not by much, but most of those battles would have been fought between the two blue lines. There was a great number of turnovers by both hockey clubs in that first period of play. The place is packed, and tough to judge whether most of the audience is cheering for the Czechs or the Russians. The cheering seems pretty evened out during the warm-ups. I think it's neutral, and just like in last night's game here, when the Russians scored, they all cheered. When the Canadians scored, they all cheered. Lubomov coming back, got the center, long shot. Schmid steers that aside. Hayek after it, trying to get it out. Zinoya gets it back to the blue line. Rizan said the shot, the rebound, was right there, and Muratov, number 14, couldn't get a stick on it. He's got it now, though. Muratov had it roll away from him, and back the other way. Havlak moving up. He was tied up and never did get a good shot away. Riazantsev up carefully to center, works it up ahead, Muratov trying to get it across for Zinoviev, Muratov still with that puck, gets it in front for Duma, bounced away from him, Lubomov with a shot, that didn't make it to the net, Lubomov with it here, trying to shovel it by Vasicek, now wheeling in, Smirnov crunched along the boards. He spun out. And the Czechs will start it back. Three of them through the neutral zone. The puck dumped in. Kraft moving up after. This is Kristek with it. Kraft is working down in behind the goal. Puck comes to him. Kraft trying to get away. Battling there with Marion. Holly wraps it back in. And Shadilov coming back out for the Russians. Leaves it there for Smirnov. Gets it up ahead. Knocked away from Tarasenko. Here's Merriams. Smirnov. Up to the line. Leaves it there for Tarasenko. Or tried to. Dumped in the corner. This is Kraft. Working it to the line. Shadilov fires it back up. Here's Kutlak. Plays it up. In over the blue line. And that one was just steered away by Breeze Galloff. The checks on a change. Pivko after it in the corner. Shadilov works it over. Esipov, long pass up ahead. Shadilov in over the blue line. Offside called on the Russians. 
Played five minutes and 25 seconds, period two of this gold medal game, and still zeros. The second period is brought to you by Ford Focus 2000. Expect more. Yeah, that little kid there could use a booster seat. So she can just see up over the riser. Front row seat. Here we go. And over the blue line, and he was jarred there. Knocked down by Belandon. Lappin. Up to the line, leaves it there for Boots, and the play goes offside. The Russians trying to carry the puck in on that last shift, but yet they met five white sweaters. Klebnikov was the man trying to do that. He's a good skater, he's a very agile player, and scored a goal in last night's Canadian game. He scored the first goal of the game to put the Russians up one to nothing in the second period. The Russians have been doing a little bit of experimenting through the neutral zone. They're trying to hit an open man. They were successful at that at their last two breakouts through the neutral zone. But what they're trying to do is trying to shoot it in, then they try to carry it in, and they're finding the checks difficult to deal with. And they keep it moving along the boards. Smirnov comes out. Pardon me, that's Savitsky. Gets it in over the blue line, deep. Hayek back to pick it up. Spitke didn't have much of a choice, though. It was a one-on-three. Havlat starting back, rolls it up ahead. Sohor comes in down the wing, trying to drill it through. Svoboda up there in the rush as well. When Brizgalov goes down, he still covers an awful lot of room. You mentioned earlier about his size at six foot three. When he goes down on his two knees, he still covers the upper corners of the net. This is Duma. And over the blue line, getting some help now from Zinoviev. Zinoviev pelted there along the boards. And Yaroslav Svoboda starting back for the checks. Gets over center and dumps it in. Craft. Duma controlling that puck, moves in, shoots! And that is stopped by Schmid. Nice job by Duma to get that puck down onto his stick and test the Czech goaltender. CA, just you and a few million gift ideas. Spurs, Suns, NBA basketball, TSN, Friday. Always good to see the Jim Van Horn fan club out in full force, <laughs> and they'll all be tuning in on the satellite to watch Sports Desk at 6.30 Eastern time. And Jim appreciates it. Played 7-18 of the second period. 0-0 is the score. Puck rolls loose. And away comes Chris Deck. In over the blue line. Chris Deck. Fired it right across in front. Kraft was being checked. Kutlak trying to drill it through. He's bumped along the boards. This is Smirnov. He'll start back for Russia. In over the blue line. Smirnov flicks it up. Tereschenko after it. Holly. 
up for Kraft. Chris Deck is with him as they come in. And he's just backed up. Tarasenko was right on him. Chris Deck is the third leading goal scorer with five goals in this tournament. Belandin steps across center, clears it in, and Schmid, with a couple of Russians bearing in hard, decides to hang on to it. Kristek has got good speed, too. He plays for Tri-Cities in the Western Hockey League. He was a Buffalo draft pick back in 98. Watch right from the faceoff, and watch Kristek go. Here he is, folks, and he sees the open space. He saw the puck, and he just took right off. He's got that good speed. He tried to make the move to the inside. It worked the first time, but he knew that he, he was in almost too tight up against the Russian defender to be able to get a good shot away, so he tried one extra move. Five players on this Czech team play in the Canadian Hockey League. Chris Deck was a big goal scorer in the Western Hockey League last year with 42 goals and 51 assists. Belandin starting back. Reyes Antsev, long pass up to the blue line, looking for Olevnikov. Interesting with Chris Deck because I talked to his general manager earlier this week and they said, well, he can score in the Western Hockey League, but can he score here? Bohatch fires one. That's knocked away. Well, I think the defense a lot tighter in this tournament than it is in any of the three Canadian Junior Leagues. But the point being, though, he has scored here with five goals. Third best goal scorer. So not a bad tournament for him at all. Here we go. Number 16 for the check. Slams on the brakes, trying to create a little room back there. Gets it right in front. And Niederos just fired it wide. Poked at that puck, and it just floated wide of the corner. Not sure that it was sitting down for him when he took the shot. The Royal Bank Financial Group has developed the Toonie Toss fundraising program, a fun way to raise money for minor hockey. Toss a Toonie from the stands. One nearest the target wins great prizes. Proceeds from the event go directly to your community hockey program. The Royal Bank, proud supporters of the CHA. Face off in Russian territory. We played 9.39 of the second period of this gold medal game, the first time that these two countries have ever played for gold at the World Junior Championship. Russia and the Czech Republic. Svitky in over the blue line. Gets it up ahead. Fired wide there by Evan Isenkov. Pass there was behind Svitky. Tapped up by Safranov. Afan Isenkov took a swing at it, and it's cleared out. Reyes Antsev gave it away. And offside the call. Lucky for Reyes Antsev, who turned it over to Zubnek Ergel. Svoboda was quick to jump in there. Unfortunately, it was offside, but Yaroslav Svoboda was quick to jump on that mistake. Reyes Antsev just gave up that puck, and so... As we talked about earlier in this hockey game, it is a game of mistakes, and who's going to be able to capitalize on them? But then again, they've got to find their way past the goaltenders who have been true to their cause early in this hockey game. Here's Kutlak, fires it in. And here comes Riz Ansef. Up ahead for Duma, he was muscled off the puck. Muratov getting it in, but not very far. There's Kutlak up for Kristek. Have a look. Kristek along the boards, ahead for Kraft. Moving in, shoots. Tried to cut across there and use Lubimov as the screen. And a nice stop by Breeze Galov, the Russian goaltender. Milan Kraft, who plays for Prince Albert. Last year in PA, talk about big goal scorers in the Western Hockey League. He had 47 goals this year in the Western Hockey League. He's already had 16 in just 28 games. He was definitely the man that right from the very start of this tournament, a lot of people were talking about, and for good reason. 
Well, he got off to a ripping start in the tournament in the first game against the Slovaks. He scored three goals and picked up an assist on the way to a 5-2 check win. Pass up ahead, just missed Duma. No ice. Zinoviev up after it. Gets it in front. Puck fired by Muratov wide of the target. Lubomov steps up after it. Back after the puck. Picks it up along the boards and out. And away come the checks. And over the blue line, that puck fired in there by Civic. Civic now chasing all the way around to pick it up. And this time dumps it in so his team can complete its line change. Pass up ahead. Zinoviev tried to tiptoe his way into the clear. Irgel in over the blue line. Rolls it across in front of the net. And that puck wouldn't sit down for Pico, who was going to the goal. Yindra clears it in. Maria Zantsev out to center. And again, the Russians... For the most part, get as far as that check line, and there is just nowhere to go. The check team stacked right up along a white wall that's tough to penetrate. It's a fact. A Whopper from Burger King has 40 grams of fat. It's also a fact that Subway has seven sandwiches with six grams of fat or less. That's a difference of 34 grams of fat. To burn the calories from that additional fat, you could do 1,785 jumping jacks, row 6.2 kilometers, climb 2,249 stairs, or just come to Subway for one of these great tasting sandwiches. Subway, it's the way a sandwich should be. Well, these two men both know the coaching game very well. Claude Julien and Tom Rennie, they were discussing after last night's loss about the style of play that the Russians play. Now the same style that the Czechs are playing here. It's not very entertaining hockey. And for the Canadians, I'll still take their type of game. Win or lose, it's entertaining hockey. They were dumping and chasing and banging and crashing, trying to carry the puck in at times, making some good plays at the same time, playing a physical match. It was not a boring match, not the least bit. In fact, probably the most entertaining hockey game in this whole tournament was last night's game between Canada and Russia. Well, there's not much doubt, not much at all, that man for man, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. trying to move the puck in front, wide open, Vazicek had the chance. And Vazicek still trying to get loose. And going back to the front of the net. Checks with some pressure here and some jump. And the puck rolled in on goal there. Svoboda just fanned on it. Just to finish the point, Gary, I mean, man for man, not much doubt that the Russians are more skilled than the Canadians, man for man, if you want to match them up. But yeah, you, tell, you tell me which style of hockey you You can take all the skilled players in the world you want, and if you play a style of hockey like that, not only are you wasting the skill to a degree, but it's, it's as exciting as watching paint dry. Well, I'll tell you what, the North American fans wouldn't put up with this type of hockey and paying big money to go see it. I mean, they just simply wouldn't. And that's been discussed many times over here. The Swedish League's talking about the Finnish League, about how it's just so defensive-oriented that it's taking the fans away from the game. Tom Rennie said that's why they love to have the Canadian national team come over and play so many exhibition games is because it's such entertaining hockey and they love to see their teams playing up against that type of entertaining hockey. Oh yeah, but you know, we don't have the skills. Well, we've got some work to do on our skills. We can always improve in that category and, and skating is one of them. You know, we can work on that, but again, in our game, Paul, back home, our kids have got an awful lot of choices out there, and no longer are the 11 and 12-year-olds hanging around, playing outdoor rinks, and playing ball hockey, playing in the streets nearly as much. They're on computers, computer games, they're on the internet. There's a whole lot of choices for our kids. And is that so wrong? Schmidtke gets it up ahead, moving in, boots, cuts right in, rolls it in front of the net, the puck is loose. Oh, nice shot on goal by Muratov that's turned aside. Vitki leading the rush up there, and a good scoring chance for Russia. You know, at times I have wondered why Schmid wears that glowworm type of helmet. It's almost as though it's a target. 
and maybe he wears that for a, a very good reason because it's got to be a little distracting when you're coming in and trying to shoot on this man and that bright helmet has got to catch your eye the Russians were trying to be strong on the puck in front they were strong in the puck last night against Canada there's no question that they've got strength they've got great agility and puck handling skills are extremely good that was Poot who moved in for the initial chance and then Schwitke was there trying in the rebound Muratov was also up in the mix but still 0-0 zero, zero. Pass up ahead, here's Pivko. Had to dance his way by Denisov. That didn't pan out. Yindra, long shot. Here's Galov, knocked that away. Under six minutes to go in the second period. 0-0 zero, zero the score. In deep is Fedorov. Fedorov off the boards there into the slot, back at the blue line. Shadlick with a shot, and play whistled down. It came out offside. We should have joined us at the conclusion of this gold medal game for the TSN Turning Point, brought to you today by Rayovac. Our battery lasts 80% longer. We're 81% longer. Instead of trash talk, how about some straight talk? Try Rayovac. If you don't think they're just as good, you get your money back. You can't lose. I like that. Scoring chances pretty even. Russia six, the Czechs four. Lubomov at the blue line knocks it up. Yaroslav Svoboda will start back. And over the blue line. Drills one, a rising shot, and that caught Brizgalov right on the mask. That's sure how it sounded. A rising, ripping shot off the stick of Yaroslav Svoboda. That stunned him for a moment, and he just stayed right down on his knees. What a great shot it was here by Svoboda, who you can see that big windup of his. He got a lot behind that shot. Watch the windup. Almost a roundhouse, and he just came following all the way through with that, and Breeze Galoff really took that one high. Can't even imagine them. The days of old when, no, the players couldn't shoot that hard, but goaltenders didn't wear masks. I don't even need to go back that far. Remember the early masks back in the early 70s, early mid 70s, and a guy'd get hit like that and he'd still be cut for stitches. Like a Jerry Cheever's mask that had lots of stitch marks on it. Peter Svoboda with a shot. Riz Galov stops it and hangs on. I was talking to one of the European scouts earlier, and uh, just that point that I was making about all of the diversification for young hockey players now and how that might be the case in Canada and the United States. He was talking about how the fact that the Swedish players, they're having that same difficulty because all of the young players, they're not outside playing hockey nearly as much anymore. They're inside playing computer games. They're on the Internet. They're doing a whole lot of other things, and they found that they've got, every community's got far more choices for their young players. Buck comes back, turning and firing one was Vasicek, and that is held by Brzezgalov. And yet when it comes to, as he was pointing out, some of the, the poorer nations, is that they don't have those same options, and the Russians in particular, I mean, back in their country, they just don't have all of those choices that our young people have just technology-wise alone, and as a result, they still, as this man knows and likes, they still are spending a lot of time on outdoor rinks, practicing their shots, doing an awful lot of skating. And yes, their practices are very, very skilled oriented, but so much of the skating and puck handling ability still comes from those good old times and the open ponds, the outdoor arenas, and the opportunity just to go out there and play good old shinny. Kraft got it back. Chris Deck with a quick shot off the draw. And we just don't have that many outdoor rinks even available to us anymore in Canada. Marion carries ahead. Tried to feed to Schwitke there at the blue line. Tereschenko comes up. Didn't land the payload that time. This is Kulak. Up for Kraft. Marion back after it. Bangs it along the boards and out. Schwitke. Trying to knock it down. Tereschenko gets it across and in a little bit too tight with Smirnov. 
And the long pass that was intended for Civic, moving through the neutral zone, but didn't click. Canadian game. Welcome back to the gold medal game. A 0-0 tie here late in the second period between the Czechs and the Russians. And guys, one of the big differences I noticed at ice level is the Czechs have a distinct size and strength superiority over this Russian team. And they've been exercising that throughout the game. And it's one of the reasons why they have carried the play. They have been strong in the puck and they're more physical. There's Kristek coming out for the checks. Long shot as he stepped at center. Here's Galov. Drops it off. The Landon turned the puck over. The checks were buzzing around there, but then broken up and back the other way. In over the line comes Boots. Gets some help from Elebnikov. And Elebnikov tied up there in the corner. Back left, need a roast. clears it in. Buck comes up along the boards. Havlat rolls it out. Fighting his way through there is Svoboda. Buck rolls away from him. Safranov got it to the line, but not out. Fired in there. That's Svoboda getting it in front. Fedorov feeds it up ahead. Svitki in deep. Hey, 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 come on, come on, come on. Svitki still battling there with Hayek. Got just banked in by Vasicek. Here's Fedorov. Up ahead, that's knocked down. Kraft stopped at the blue line. Savranov lost the puck, breaking in. Kristek looks, rolled it right in front of the net, chopped on goal by Civic, and covered up by Brees Galov. Civic with a nice quick pass. Well, the Czechs looking to score that first goal. They're trying to be strong along the boards. That they've done. And the Russians really went back into that box formation. Breeze Galoff had to be sharp here. You could see that he went down and really ended up with a puck that was somewhat fluttering. It almost fooled him. And then he was quick to jump on it after that. He seems to have regained his concentration after taking that high shot earlier. Kraft up there trying to dig it loose. The Czech captain gets double teamed there along the boards. Zinoviev moves it ahead to Duma. Duma to Muratov. Holly back to pick it up. Kristek. No! Lubomov clears it back out. And Chris Tech shoots it back in. Checks will get in a change. A minute and a half to go in the second period. 0-0. The Czech Republic and Russia in this gold medal game. Lubomov. Long pass up. That is steered in by Schwitke. Holly back to get it. Fisco. 
Leaves it there back in his own net for Yindra. I'll say this much. With the way that these two teams trap, there's more dumping and chasing in this game than there is in any Canadian game. Ergo shoots it in. Lubomov back to get it. I see the dump part, but not much chasing. Well, no. <laughs> it's a one-man chase. <laughs> Gudilov out to center, gets it ahead. Spitke in over the blue line. Squeeze there along the boards. There's Pico. Gets it up ahead, Irgo. Out through the neutral zone. Dropped it to the line, chopped away by Nidaros. Baryshenko. Elednikov trying to get loose. There's Smirnov into the corner, and it's cleared out. An icing call on the Czech Republic with nine seconds to go in this second period. When Canadians dump and chase, they have got always two men in on top of that puck and the third ready to jump right in if, in fact, they know that they can contain and control and start to cycle and then look for their opportunities from there. But when these two teams end up dumping the puck in, as they have to so often because of the large number of bodies between the two blue lines, it is really only a one-man chase. A very, very defensive-oriented game, waiting to make that large mistake. And there have been very few mistakes, period, in this whole game. And you know, Paul, Canada could have played a game like this. They're, they they know tactically very well how to play a game like this, but they choose not to. 0-0 zero, zero through two. Here's Gordon Miller. All right, Paul, coming up at our second intermission, Bob McKenzie between the benches. Canadian Classics features Captain Manny Malhotra, and we'll have a TSN update for you. Two periods are complete in the gold medal game. The Czech Republic and the Russians are tied at zero. Introducing Vector, a new source of energy. It's not a cereal, it's a meal replacement. And like others, it's engineered to give your body 16 micronutrients it needs and taste great. Vector from Kellogg. Fuel up. How the years, they fly by. Fleeting glimpses, moments in our lives. You gotta hold on to them, catch them while you can. These are the moments, these are the moments. ABC holds the moments of our lives. So, Wayne, you're retired. What's next for the great one? I'm thinking about wrestling. Wrestling? Wrestling? Well, who'd have thunk it? Hey, great one. Uh-oh. Now there's a bicep. Has Wayne seen that? Come here. Here comes trouble. Hi, Wayne. Hi, Bert. How do you like your retirement? <laughs> Do you want points? Want to win great prizes? Got an SO Extra card? So use it. Now you can win and earn at SO. Swipe the card, win and earn. The new Dakota Quad Cab comes with a nice big bed and big back doors that lead to a great big cab for putting things you don't want outside, inside, and vice versa. Outside, inside, outside. Inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, oops. That's better. The Dodge Dakota Quad Cab. Big room, big doors, big difference. For six seasons, we've brought you the biggest names in the game. Join Brett Lindros for the show that brings you closer to the players. Be a player 2000. See it. Live it. TSN. Thursday, check out a skill-filled lineup on TSN. Viewers in the Montreal Canadiens area get a look at the surprising St. Louis Blues, while Nine Ball in the America's Cup Challenger Series share the national spotlight. Get it all on TSN.
Back in Schleppio, Sweden, Czech Republic and Russia tied at zero through two periods of the gold medal game for the 2000 World Junior Hockey Championship. Here's our man between the benches, Bob McKenzie. And when you stand at the center ice red line in a game like this, you'll see lots of players because not many of them cross it. Bob, at the risk of sounding facetious, <laughs> tell me again why big ice European hockey is so much better than ours. Well, my first response to Gord is, what red line? <laughs> and that also complicates matter the fact that they do play on this big ice without a red line. We talked about it earlier in the tournament. It creates a greater sense of paranoia that there's extra maneuvering room on offense. And the minute that happens, the teams go into the defensive shell and play the neutral zone trap like it's not played anywhere else, not in the National Hockey League. It really is uh, opposites or ironic, if you will, that teams as skilled, as individually skilled as the Czechs and the Russians are, play tactics that are skill neutralizing. And obviously, they do something right in their development system whereby the players can skate and handle a puck better than most North Americans but then we come to a game like this where you would think you'd see all that wonderful skill on display, and instead what we end up with is a chess match. And that's interesting to note, Bob, that uh, maybe the, uh, the Europeans uh, don't play like they practice, and Canadians don't practice like they play. <laughs> it's uh, kind of an odd thing. The Czechs are interesting. Uh, their general manager telling me during the second period they just can't play run and gun with the Russians, but they've played defense like no one else in this tournament. Well, they have, and in fairness uh, to the Czechs, they've generated more off the rush than the Russians have, and the best scoring chances in my mind in this game have come from the Czechs, although they are always cautious. And an interesting fact in this tournament, the Czechs have never, not once, not for one second in this tournament, trailed in any game. And that is obviously a big key to their success because they know that if they can keep it close, if they cannot be running, uh, playing from a hole, they don't have to open it up, and they can continue to stifle whatever offense the other team is trying to generate, and they've done a good job of that. I couldn't even begin to tell you whether this Czech goaltender, Schmidt is a good goaltender or not, because he really doesn't have to face that many really good shots. The Czechs do a great job of the neutral zone of bottling things up, and they're also very good down low in their own end. It reminds me very much of the way the Czechs, Czech Republic played to win the gold medal at Nagano. Now, Dominic Hasek was in net there. He's not here, but so far, I don't think it makes a difference. Bob, let's talk a little bit about the Canadians uh, who won a bronze medal earlier today. When you look at them, the way they played both this Czech Republic team and the Russians, you can see when these two teams play each other why a team like Canada that goes chasing the puck would get in trouble. Well, they do, and they get breakdowns from time to time. And in fairness to the Czechs and the Russians, it takes an unbelievable amount of discipline and, believe it or not, energy and mental toughness to play this kind of hockey. Now, that's not crowd-pleasing, and we're not particularly enjoying it as North Americans looking for some more banging and crashing and some more conflict. But I'll tell you what, the discipline required by, especially the defensemen, when it goes back, those defensemen so seldom do they mishandle a puck. And I think that's the big difference between the North American teams in this tournament and the European teams that are in this gold medal game, is that their puck handling skills, for all we want to talk about neutral zone trap and everything else, they can regroup, go D to D, and break that puck up the ice without almost ever giving it away. Gee, Bob, maybe what they need is to make that rink 10 feet narrower and put the red line in. Oh, wait a minute. I think we've seen that before. Bob McKenzie, our man between the benches. Keep watching. We may need you for the shootout that looms large. Back with more from the 2000 World Junior Hockey Championship right after this. approach the net, they don't see a goaltender, they see a fortress. 
The hockey rink is my kingdom, and I am its guardian. What's your dream? So, Wayne, you're retired. What's next for the great one? I'm thinking about wrestling. Wrestling? Wrestling? Well, who'd have thunk it? A great one. Uh-oh. Now there's a bicep. Has Wayne seen that? Come here. Here comes trouble. Hi, Wayne. Hi, Bert. How do you like your retirement? <laughs> do you want points? Want to win great prizes? Got an SO Extra card? So use it. Now you can win and earn at SO. Swipe the card, win and earn. For every guy who'd rather swing a club than dance in one. For every guy who's ever prepared a gourmet meal. For every guy who knows exactly why they're man's best friend. And for every guy who appreciates the benefits of being a guy. We'd like to introduce you to the Dodge Durango. It has the most cargo space, towing capacity, and power of any SUV in its class. The Dodge Durango. It's good to be a guy. The best thing about playing hockey to me is um, the intensity of the game and, and the competition that goes along with it and uh, being in, in, in the middle of games and in those stressful situations where you have to be at your best. And, um, not only that, but it, it's being a part of a team and being a part of a group that all has a, a common goal in mind. Um, it's, it's really something special to be a part of a team, especially in the game of hockey. My first uh, first link to the game of hockey was, was Wayne Gretzky and um, watching him in highlight reels every night, uh, the records he had, um, you know, he was untouchable to me in the game of hockey. Tissot, the Swiss brand, preferred by the Swiss themselves. So I finally get to see your place. Yeah, this is, uh, it. It's interesting. <laughs> hey, you want to go out for pizza? Can't they deliver? I mean, can't we stay in? Okay. Wait right here and I'll... In goes McCain Rising Crest Pizza. The crust rises up crispy and tender. Excuse me? Nothing. It's loaded with toppings. It's good. Yeah. It's really good. Mm-hmm. It was fast, too. Mm -hmm. They always deliver to your back door. <laughs> McCain Rising Crest Pizza. Who can tell it from takeout? Marry me. Okay. <laughs> Here's a little thing to think about. Your furniture never gets a day off. That's seven days a week of constant use. And no matter how thoroughly you clean, guess what? Odors get tracked in fabrics. That's why it's time to spray Febreze. And just like that, you can make odors go away. Really go away. So your whole house will end up smelling clean. Hey, sometimes the little things make a big difference. Febreze cleans life smells out of fabrics for good. The Royal Bank Financial Group has developed the Toonie Toss fundraising program, a fun way to raise money for minor hockey. Toss a Toonie from the stands. One nearest the target wins great prizes. Proceeds from the event go directly to your community hockey program. The Royal Bank, proud supporters of the CHA. Sports Desk with Jim Van Horn brings you more than scores and highlights. It brings you to the experts and players themselves. Canada's number one pick for sports news and information is TSN Sports Desk with Jim Van Horn. Good afternoon, everybody. NFL New York Jets still looking for a head coach. Bill Belichick has turned down the job that was made available yesterday with the retirement of Bill Parcells. Meanwhile, big game for the Raptors tonight when they host the red-hot Portland Trail Blazers at the ACC. The game marks the return of Damon Stoudemire to Toronto, but the uh, Raptors won't just be concentrating on him. 
you overcompensate for Stoudemire and then Pippen or Steve Smith kill you. You know, and that's not even to bring in uh, Sabonis or, or Rasheed Wallace. So it's, uh, you know, you don't look at it that way. You, you hopefully that your players have the maturity to understand what the game means to Damon. You can't focus on one player. They have, they have legends on their team. So it's, it's impossible to focus on one player. So we just have to come together as a team tonight. And I just really have to do my part to lead the team. Coming up on Sports Desk, all the action from the final day of the World Junior Tournament where Canada won bronze in the shootout. Complete Raptor Blazers preview and Mr. Subnumbers looks at the upcoming PGA season. How the years, they fly by Leading glimpses, moments in our lives Gotta hold on to them, catch them while you can These are the moments, these are the moments ABC holds the moments of our lives. Welcome to my Hall of Fame. Home of the quickest, most awesome player to ever hit the ice. The place where with one unexpected move, I can single-handedly from thousands to their feet. What's your dream? That's about all that's been in the net in this game. 0-0 zero, zero the score through two between Russia and the Czech Republic. Not sure the Cheerios folks are getting their money's worth here. Second period summary brought to you by Cheerio. Cheerios. It all starts here. A no scoring to recap in the old summary. Shots on goal, 29-20. And that in itself might be a little bit of, uh, of a surprise, the fact that the, the Czechs have outshot the Russians by a, a fair margin in the first two periods. The Russians, as you will recall, came out to start the second period with a little bit more spark and a little bit more aggressiveness in front of the net but that didn't last for a long period of time Bob McKenzie was talking about the the size and strength difference when you take a look at the Czechs they've got some big players Peter Svoboda's back there at six foot three 209 pounds David six foot three they've got a player like Vasistek who is six foot four Svoboda Yaroslav Svoboda who's over six foot they've got a number of players with good size and strength and that has been noticeable in the first two periods And when you're playing that defensive style and trapping in the neutral zone as much as these two teams do, when you've got size and strength, and that is a real asset of being able to execute your system. The Russians have been powerful, and they had a much easier pool to come through with Games against Kazakhstan, Ukraine, and Switzerland. One tough one there against Sweden that they looked awesome in. They dominated the Swedes, shutting out Finland in the quarters, and their toughest test was against Canada in the semis. They won 3-2, but prior to the tournament, the Russians played Canada in an exhibition game. That was a 1-1 tie, and I still maintain, as I said at the end of last night's show, that if Canada and Russia played in a 4-7 series, it would probably go seven games and then flip a coin. Well, getting to that stage in this one, the Czechs and the Russians, 0-0 as we get things rolling in this third period. Smirnov in over the blue line. Heading to the outside, Svoboda trying to get a mark on him. Down the middle, Havlat, backhand shot, just fired it wide. Havlat came breaking down and went to that backhand. He's got it again now, works it back up to the blue line. Puck fired in and covered up by Breeze Galov. Nice rush there by Martin Havlat, Ottawa Senators draft pick. Take a look between the boards. Brought to you by Molson Canadian. It's a Canadian game. You talk about an even second period of play. These two statistics right here pretty much show how even it was. I would, however, in the execution of the game in the second period, give the edge to the Czechs. 
And some problem with the one of the lights above the ice. At least that was my read on it. Zdenek Schmid came out, talked to the referee, Danny Kerman, who was pointing up at one of the lights in there. They put the spotlight out. Perhaps it was in the goaltender's eyes. You're talking about Havlat's drive to the net. That's one of the things that he's known for. At six foot two, he's got the height and the reach to be able to do it rather effectively. Lapin for the Russian starts back. Icing call on Russia. 42 seconds into this third period, 0-0 the score. Here again is Gord Miller. All right, thank you guys. Uh, of course, the Czech Republic seeks its first World Junior gold medal, and they got a little bit of help uh, earlier today. A call from some Pittsburgh Penguins. Yuri Schlager, Martin Straka, and oh yeah, there's another Czech to place for the Penguins. A guy named Yager wishing them well and hoping they bring home the gold. So that the tradition could continue. Well, Czechs have had a great run at the senior level, of course, uh, at the Olympic Games. The star-studded team backed by Dominic Hasek at the World Championship. They won the gold medal last year. And as I talked about earlier in this show, I really like their camaraderie and their team. They're an emotional team. And wasn't that many years ago that the Czechs or the Russians were rather a stoic bunch. Well, they didn't really show that emotion, but boy, that is changing, especially with the Czechs. And the, the Czechs embarrassed themselves in the inaugural World Cup back in 96 when they lost to the Germans and didn't even make it to the playoff round. But since then, they've bounced back with a vengeance. Puck down into the corner, Alemnikov after it. Comes up with that puck. Only for a moment, though. Alemnikov along the boards. Down there for Boot. Boot upended. Kristek clears it out. Esipov back to pick it up for Russia. Played just over a minute and a half into this third period. 0-0. I didn't see it. Rios Ansad. Fires that puck in. Indra gets it up around. Here go. Clearing it out to center. You know what would be worth the price of admission? Brett Hall's commentary on this type of a game. <laughs> I'd love to hear that analysis. He's critical enough of the, <laughs> the defensive slanted play in the National Hockey League. And imagine how he, his eyes would bug out of his head watching this. <laughs> or perhaps he'd be lulled to sleep. Well, I'll tell you what. I would love to <laughs> see a situation where Brett Hall was forced to play this type of game. I don't think that would happen, but the coaches would have their hands full. Pivko hanging back in the slot, but the shot doesn't go towards the slot, but instead wide of the goal and up around and back. Svoboda, long pass up ahead. Irgo plays it all the way back to Svoboda, and they will reload. There's that long pass again. Havlat tried to knock it down, but was angled out by Safranov. Fedorov clears it in. Schmidke trying to get up there to forecheck. And as you mentioned earlier, Gary, lots of dump, but not much chase. The players being held up at the blue line, they just can't get in to generate a lot of pressure. Havlat. Squeeze out of the play there. Safranov gets it up along the boards. Fired back in by Hayek. Come on. Have an icing cop. Up there chasing it at the blue line for the Russians. Hayek plays it across and takes the return feed. Kristek lets it go up ahead. Kraft moving in. Fired one. That was stopped. Kristek moving into the mix. Kraft is parked out in front of it. They can get it there. And here comes Kraft. Little move there at the line, but Barashenko cut a piece of him and starts back the other way. Right down the middle. Tried to tee it up there for Zinoviev. Here's Kraft again. Wristing it down deep into Russian territory. Oh. 
to D-Lock. And that's an icing call on the Russians. Live on TSN, you're watching the gold medal game of the World Junior Hockey Championship. It's a fact. A Whopper from Burger King has 40 grams of fat. It's also a fact that Subway has seven sandwiches with six grams of fat or less. That's a difference of 34 grams of fat. To burn the calories from that additional fat, you could do 1,785 jumping jacks, row 6.2 kilometers, climb 2,249 stairs, or just come to Subway for one of these great tasting sandwiches. Subway, it's the way a sandwich should be. Czech road to gold. They started off with an emotional win over the Slovaks to avenge a loss from the opening game last year at the World Junior when it was in Winnipeg, tied the U.S. That was a, an exciting game against Canada, penalty filled though it was, and had to get by the States in the semifinal. And the United States actually played a pretty good game, but they just couldn't score, and that was their difficulty throughout the tournament. Alebnikov swings in over the blue line. And rolls it down there deep. Kirchsev tying him up. Oletnikov cycling back towards the front of the goal, hoping someone could get it out, but no can do. Yindra coming back out. Esipov starting back. Lapin. Maria Zantsev. Zinoviev up there to the line, got it in. And number 13, Zinoviev going up hard after it. Had to run some interference, but he's got it now. Zinoviev looking towards the front. Muratov, number 14, up there takes it now. Works it back to the line. A wrist shot fired wide by Lubomov. Rizantsev pinching up. Gets it around back of the goal. Lubomov moving over. Voboda gets it by him and down the ice. And it's an icing call on the Czech Republic. We've played 540 in this third period. It is 0-0. The ESO Medals and Certificates of Achievement program rewards youngsters across Canada with most dedicated, most sportsmanlike, and most improved player medals and reinforces team commitment with Certificates of Achievement for each member. ESO, proud supporters of the CHA. Fedorov moving up to take the face off for the Russians. Here's Kraft, takes it up along the boards. Kraft being double shifted in the early going here in this third period, number 14. No! You get the feeling we could save time and just go straight to the shootout right now? <laughs> you know, Bob McKenzie talked about the discipline that's required to play a type of game like this. And the coaches, we've all tried those type of things over the years. I can remember back in Peterborough, the, trying to beat the Ottawa 67s with Bobby Smith, Steve Payne, Tim Higgins, and it was very difficult. So finally, we employed this trap type of system. We just sent one man in, and then we, in fact, in one game, we didn't even send any man in, and Brian Kilray's team elected not to come out of their own end. They stand back and just pass the puck back and forth until finally I was forced to send our defenseman, our defensive defenseman, into the end zone to forecheck. I wouldn't allow our wingers or our center icemen to go in and forecheck. And afterwards, we still have another game against Ottawa. Brian Kilray sent a telex at that point in time to us, wishing, he said, as his broadcasters wanted to know what type of system we were going to employ this time, because if it was going to be the same, they'd stay home and do a University of Carleton in Ottawa ping pong match. <laughs> we didn't beat them employing that type of tactic, and in fact, I made the mistake of doing it at home and got booed and stuff thrown at by our own fans in Peterborough. Civic, out through the neutral zone, dumps it in. Well, in most major team sports, defense always seems to be one step ahead of offense, or catches up to it quickly. Now you look at basketball where they've reshaped the rules to try to figure out a way to 
to beat choking defense, get a little more offense into the game. Hockey uh, desperately trying to do the same thing. Well, look, we could do it easily. And the way to do it, even in a game like this, is simply not allow the coaches to coach this way. I mean, it's not the players that want to play this way. It's the coaches who are coaching this way. Steve Coe drops it off there along the boards. Niederos trying to get it out in front. And in a moment's notice, if these two coaches said, open it up, boys, let's go for it. Three men in for checking. Defensemen start pinching. Boy, I'll tell you, you'd have a wide open, very skilled hockey game here and a real treat for the fans and for the players to play. But this type of system is being employed by the coaches because they feel it's their best chance to keep it close and have the opportunity to win the goal. Smirnov, a little bit of room, gets in over the blue line, but offside is called on the Russians. Plays 7.43 in the third. Still no score. When the male is in pursuit of the female, the slightest scent of unpleasantness may send the female running. Thus, I recommend right guard clear gel or clear stick. Any perspirant protection from odor and wetness that glides on clear with no flaky white stuff. How far is the female? A good 70 yards, mate. I've made longer passes than that before. Right guard, clear gel, and clear stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. Third period is brought to you by Subway, the way a sandwich should be. And a few of the faces of the Canadian players. There's young Jay Bomeister here waiting to be awarded their bronze medals in the post-game ceremony. Ryan Finley in goal today. He, he was the hero. Yeah, he was the hero. A, a silver around his neck from last year's team. But I'm sure he feels as though he was much more a part of the bronze. He only played 20 minutes last year. Hoot in over the blue line. Hoot trying to come out of the corner. He gets hauled down. Svoboda in over the blue line. By the way, we'll have coverage of that medal ceremony for you after the game. See the gold, silver, and bronze medals awarded. That's coming taking up your, after this one. Your man to the net all the way into the net. Esipov, the Russian defenseman, was making sure that he had his man, as the saying goes. Got my man. He had him all right. He had big Yaroslav Svoboda and a pretty good hold on him. I'm surprised that he didn't end up with a holding penalty or interference penalty for that move. Only one penalty called in this game. And we expected this referee Danny Kerman to kind of let these two teams play hockey, knowing full well that if he started calling penalties on either side, it would end up balancing off by the end of the game anyway. So he's let them play hockey and maintained somewhat of a flow. You know, to get back to your discussion, though, and tailing off of your Peterborough Ottawa story, you're right, the players aren't the problem. The problem is coaches, and I don't blame them because. No owner ever said, hey, you know what? I want you to go out and have a really entertaining team. They want to win. If you don't win, you're fired. Uh, it, it, at so any league, absolutely. It's, it's survival coaching, and that came up in the Open Ice Summit. That is a big problem with our game in North America, and at this level, too, for that matter. The game in general, it's survival coaching. You want to keep your job, you have to win, and coaches are going to try to do just that. Win, baby. They don't care how pretty it is. The owners came down and said, we don't want you to play this way. We want you to play three man in deep. We want the defenseman pinching. We want full out, wide open, entertaining hockey. And here's a five-year contract, and win or lose, I'm going to be behind you. Well, that's not going to happen either, Paul, but that could easily change any coach's mind. Civic bouncing it in there for the checks. Lubomov trying to get it out. Where is Antsev, number 22 for the Russians. Takes the bump but got rid of the puck. And an icing call on the Russians. Well, time's starting to run out in this third period of play. 11 minutes and five seconds remaining. As you look at Michael Civic, a Washington draft pick, second round in 99, also 
from the Western Hockey League. Plays for Prince Albert. And he had a game-winning goal earlier in this tournament for his club. Another one of the players also with some size at six foot two, 187 pounds. Safranov gets it off the boards, knocked down. Here it goes trying to get loose. Plays it back to the line. Yindra able to keep it in. Got it towards the goal, but the checks had already started coming back out. Pivko fires it in. The puck was deep in the Russian end, and the two Czech defensemen that are out there on the ice right now were already back at their own blue line. That's a long, long way he's back from where the puck was. Denisov. Nidoros, the only man even in the zone, and now he backs out. Puck rolled down into Czech territory. Pete Cole back to get it. Frisbees it down the ice, and uh, the fans starting to get a little bit tired of this as well, with some booing after that icing call. Ten minutes and seven seconds to go in the third period, and it's still a battle of chess. 0-0 the score. It is standing room only to watch this game. But the Czechs and the Russians both continue to trap. Watch. Oh, there's the puck way down in the Russian end. But look at where one defenseman up here, another one here, and, and believe me, they were further up than they were previous to that. Because when the puck, first of all, went down to the Russian end, they were all the way back, both of them, on their own blue line. Hayek coming out. And another icing call on the checks. For over 20 years, Air Canada has sponsored Canadian hockey. From world championships to five regional midget events and the national final, the Air Canada Cup. Each year, Air Canada is pleased to present scholarships to the top players at these tournaments. Air Canada, proud supporters of the CHA. And when you hear the fans here whistling with that high shrill, they're not whistling like that thinking you're good looking out in the ice either. They're getting on these teams because of the icings and still not a very exciting game. And the fans are starting to get a little perturbed with it. Third off, back to the line. Puck fired low and wide by Shadilov. Havlak clears it in. Shadilov back to pick it up. And the fans booing the checks because they're not even going in, not even a, a hint of a fortune. Puck rolled in towards the goal, actually feathered in towards the goal, more accurate description. Havlat coming down, drops it back. Here's a check with a low shot, that was stopped. And Merriams gets it up ahead. Smirnov up towards the line, the puck tipped away. Tereschenko plays it back. Esipod. Here's Lappin. Puck bounced off the boards, and that's an icing call on the Russians. You're watching the World Junior Hockey Championship gold medal game on TSN. Bank Financial Group has developed the Toonie Toss fundraising program, a fun way to raise money for minor hockey. Toss a Toonie from the stands, one nearest the target wins great prizes. Proceeds from the event go directly to your community hockey program. The Royal Bank, proud supporters of the CHA. Checks making real sure they're not going to make a mistake. When the puck was deep in the Russian end, the checks were way, way back. Cracked, in fact was the closest man to the puck carrier, and he was five feet on the other side of the blue line, closest to the red line. 
Up there deep is Boots. Around back of the net. Boots trying to get it back to the blue line. Chris Stack. Looking across. Civic looking for it, and the puck skips up over the glass out of play. We were talking about the Olympics earlier and when the Czech Republic won, Dominic Hasek, Jager. And remember the surprising thing was with not just playing this style of play, but the fact that Jager really bought into that whole system. And I remember at the time, coaching staff in Pittsburgh really saying, wow, you see how far? There's Kraft right there, folks. And the puck was way back in here, and yet Kraft was the closest man to that puck. And he was a long, long way from it. I was wondering if he could even see the puck. He was that far away from it. And offside called. Zinoviev tried to keep it in, but it just rolled outside the line. And you almost saw a turnover there at the blue line. And that's what the, the game plans of both these teams are based on. Forcing a turnover, a mistake, and a blue line, and capitalizing, uh, capitalizing on it. Well, and that man, Peter Vorobiev, thinks that this is entertaining hockey. Well, he's got... He even looks bored himself over the bench. He's got... <laughs> he's got his hand resting on his chin, and he's not overly excited. Or maybe he's just nervous. Indra up across center, bouncing it in. Should point out again as Bob McKenzie did to give credit to these players it takes a lot of skill patience and mental concentration to play this style of hockey it may not be exciting to watch but it is tough for them to have to execute Nidoros in the corner battling with Duma and there's not one bit of dissension on either team as to how their teams are going to play you got to have everybody playing the same way. And a penalty coming up. It is going to go against the Russians. Duma's going to get a hooking hooking. call. So the Czechs will get a chance on the power play, and this could prove interesting. Well, as time is running out in this third period, it could prove real interesting, especially if the Czechs are able to not only get possession early, but really put some type of an attack here together. they got the capabilities. They can move the puck. They can skate. They're big enough, and they can shoot it. There was the penalty. Dillman's in the penalty box, and with the faceoff deep in the Russian end, let's see whether or not some of these Czech players can get their great shots away. You're right about the players, Gary, and it's a tough one because coaches want to win, players want to win, especially when you're going for a Stanley Cup or a gold medal, as the case is here. I mean, you think back to the New Jersey Devils. That was one of the most boring Stanley Cup finals I've ever seen in my life, but none of the Devils were complaining. They wanted to win the Cup. And they got a Stanley Cup. And the reason they got it was because Jacques Lemaire had them playing all on the same page, and they played the system perfectly. They didn't care who criticized them for it. Same can be said for both of these teams. So the Czechs on the power play. 0-0, trying to break this deadlock. And the puck fired by Kraft and down the ice. This is Peter Svoboda. Gets it up ahead. Pavlet in over the blue line, clears it up. Back towards the line, Svoboda rolls it up there. Pavlat back of the goal, trying to get it in front, and it is grabbed by Breeze Galov, and he holds on, 128 to go in the Czech power play. Back in the point, Peter Svoboda was almost ready to pull out because he was a little concerned, I think, that the Russians may just take advantage of the Czechs trying to press here and get this all-important go-ahead goal and look to use the boards to get out into the open. Well, we saw them do that with a shorthanded goal against Canada. Sure did, and Smirnoff, when he is out there, has got that great breakaway speed and the capabilities of doing it, and he is out there now. Off the draw, puck comes back. Worked over. Svoboda shoots. Missed the mark with that one. Kraft up after it. 
Goes into the corner. Puck rolled right across in front of the net. Civic was looking for it with that long reach of his. Number 25 for the Czechs. There's a check given a bump there along the boards. Now knock loose. Mirnov trying to get it out. Shadilov gets it up along the board. Mirnov's got that Pavel Burry type of speed, and he's just waiting to get into the open. Well, he's deep in his own zone now. There he is after the puck. Pokes it loose, and he'll carry it out. And you called it. Smirnov leading the rush down, shorthanded. Shoots off the side of the net. Smirnov using that great speed of his, shorthanded. This is Kraft with it. 30 seconds to go in the power play for the Czechs. And you know that's going to get them right back in their heels, even though they have the man <laughs> advantage. Exactly. Look at this. So much for the power play. And that's exactly Smirnov's job. He put the fear into them. Svoboda got it up ahead. Puck fired in by Irgo. Up around the boards and cleared right back out. And look at that man in the power play. Way back. Kutlak. Staying back is insurance. Up into the corner. Pipko coming up after him. He's given a bump. Penalized player back on. The team's at even strength. And the puck cleared down the ice by the Russians. And they are called for icing. Five minutes and nine seconds to go in this third period. And it is 0-0. Zero, zero. Yaroslav Pollock was probably very concerned with the way that Shmirinov was zipping around out there when they were shorthanded. The Russians shorthanded and yet still getting a scoring opportunity. <laughs> no, she's having a good time. The people uh, have just been great here in Shalaftio. Wonderful hosts. Absolutely. Hats off to them. Have lat. Working it out in front. Svoboda. And had to contend there with Duma and just couldn't overpower him. A couple of big men there locking horns. And quite honestly, all the Swedish people here watching this are quite accustomed to this. And that's been a real concern in the Swedish Elite League as well. Real lack of goals and real defensive games. They've had their own open summits to discuss the problems of lack of scoring. But cleared in. Sinoviev up after it. Fedorov along the boards. Trying to work loose. Where is Antsev? Starts off. Threw it up the middle. That was knocked down by Kraft. Wanted to get it up ahead. They had Kristek on the way on the right side. Muratov coming in. He was upended. Holly plays it across. Three minutes and 45 seconds to go in regulation time. If the two teams remain tied, they will play a 20-minute sudden death overtime period. Half an ice and Cobb. Trying to get something going here. Yaroshenko plays it up. Half an ice and Cobb. Still hooking at that puck, but not able to keep it in. Merriam's back to get it. Yaroshenko. Clears it up to the corner. Schmidtke, number 11, up there deep for the Russians. Trying to force something. Yaroshenko. There to pick it up. Works it back. And Smirnov just failed to click there. Yaroshenko up in the corner. Battling against Jindra, who gets it out. Under three minutes left, you almost got the feeling that the Russians were just going to all of a sudden change up their game and send three guys in deep. Smirnov was waiting for that. He's still out there. Oh, and they may yet do that. Knowing that you need to score to win, Svoboda shoots. That stopped up there after his own rebound. Yaroslav Svoboda trying to get it in front. Pavlats up there helping out. Puck up around the boards. Knocked down at the line. Svoboda shoots. And that is stopped. Rizgalov holds on. Under three minutes to go, and we're tied at zero. 
I am the Rocky Mountains. 100 million years I have stood here. This I know. Lead with the left, follow with the right. Buy low, sell high. Look for windows of opportunity. Take the road less traveled. Keep your stick on the ice. The grass really is greener on the other side. And always maintain an open door policy. That's hockey coming up tonight with uh, Rod Smith hosting from Toronto, but also, of course, a presence from here in Sheleftio. Gord Miller had an extensive conversation with Tom Rennie of Canadian Hockey. You'll hear that, plus all the uh, NHL news in action tonight at 7 Eastern time. Esipov starting back. Lappin gets it in. Alebnikov gets it along the boards. Belandin moves it in. Alebnikov fired it up and skipped by Poot. Under two minutes to go in regulation time. In over the line. Kraft couldn't get a shot away. Alebnikov gets it for Boot. And Boot legs it in over the line before he's pulled down. Here's Kristek. Deep toe and over the blue line. Dropped it back. Puck fired just wide by Niederos, who was open high in the slot. Here's Pipko. Niederos along the boards. Trying to force the issue. Back to Kristaps. Jindra stopped there at the line, but he gets the puck in. There was an elbow. A minute ten to go in regulation time. Safranov sends a pretty good elbow. Maria Zantsev at center. Over to Schwitke. And Yindra clears it in. And it goes out of play. Under a minute to go. 56 seconds. And then we will go to sudden death overtime for 20 minutes. If the issue still hasn't been resolved, and it may not be, then we'll go to a shootout. Which is probably the reason why they invented the shootouts, so that the games don't go forever. And the way that these two teams are cautiously playing, if you didn't have that shootout, you could well have the longest game. Merriam's back to pick it up. Across center and unloads. Off the boards, in the corner, Zinoviev. Trying to get it back for Smirnov, intercepted, Hayek clears it up. Here comes Svoboda, swings in over the line. Drives deep, Svoboda centers it, but he had no one else with him. Pass up ahead, Smirnov sprinting after it. Svoboda gets there first. They'll battle in the corner. Spitke. Back of the goal, looking. Trying to get it out in front. Zinoviev after it. Tereschenko around back of the net. Trying to get it in front, but that will do it. And we will head to sudden death overtime. Well, the cautiousness continues, and that last rush by Svoboda was a pretty good example. Not another Czech player with him. It was up to him to do it all by himself. You just can't imagine in the dying seconds of a Canadian game that ever happening. They're going for gold, and they will go to sudden death or sudden victory for you optimists.
when the male is in pursuit of the female, the slightest scent of unpleasantness may send the female running. Thus, I recommend right guard clear gel or clear stick. Any perspirant protection from odor and wetness that glides on clear with no flaky white stuff. How far is the female? A good 70 yards, mate. I've made longer passes than that before. Right guard, clear gel, and clear stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. Ca just you and a few million gift ideas. Spurs, Suns, NBA basketball, TSN Friday. Tired of all those serious end of the year movies? Whoa! Finally, a merry movie for the holiday season. Galaxy Quest is a hilarious blast. Hi, little guy. Galaxy Quest. Now playing everywhere. No score through regulation time in the gold medal game of the World Junior Hockey Championship. Overtime is still ahead. The uh, tournament all-star team has been released here in Sheleftia. One Canadian made the list, defenseman Matthew Biron. Let's take you through the list of the six all-stars. The uh, top goaltender, according to the media covering the tournament, is Rick DiPietro of the United States. Biron on defense along with Ria Zantsev. Kraft, Tereschenko, and Muratov are the top forwards as well. The director of awards have been announced. These are the top players at each position. DiPietro is the top goalie in the tournament. Riyad Zantsev has been voted the top defenseman. And Milan Kraft of the Czech Republic, the first-round pick of the Pittsburgh Penguins, has been named the top forward. Bob McKenzie with me once again. Bob, uh, very reminiscent of Nagano, if you think about the scores there in the Olympics for the Czechs. In the semifinal game against Canada, the game that went to the shootout, it was 1-1 through the regulation time and overtime. And, of course, in their gold medal win over the Russians, that wound up 1-0. Uh, these guys know how to play defense. Well, they certainly do. And, you know, the funny thing is, if you look at this Czech team, I was talking to Tom Rennie and a few other hockey people about this, they have so much size, strength, speed, and skill, it's almost criminal that they play the way they do, but that's the way they want to do it. And the big reason they feel they're in this gold medal game is because... Polik, the coach, has been able to impart to the team a desire to play that disciplined defensive style, which means no forechecking, not ever, which means no more than one man ever goes to the net on an offensive chance. Heck, there was 15 seconds left, and one of the checks was driving the net. The rebound came back out, and the pass was thrown back out in front. The other two checks were up by the blue line. There was no way they were going to get caught in the last 15 seconds of the game. I guess it's good, but uh, I don't know. It, it seems like anti-hockey to me. Bob, it brings up an interesting point, though, because the complaint in North America with the NHL, a lot of people say, well, the product's watered down by expansion. That's why maybe the games are less entertaining. This is obviously not a watered-down product. These are the best players in their age group in the world. Maybe it's got less to do with the product being watered down than it does with what Paul and Gary talked about, the style that's being played. And, and some people are talking about maybe it's time for an illegal defense call like basketball has. Maybe if, if you don't have somebody in the same zone as the puck, it's a penalty. Well, that's one, th one thing that Scotty Bowman's talked about for years, that maybe they should start calling it, although that starts to get into more basketball-type discretion calls by the referee. Maybe it's coming. I don't know. But I do know I've covered 11 of 15 World Junior Championships, and I know I saw a game between the, Czech, uh, the Czechoslovakia and the Soviet Union in 1989. It ended in a 1-1 tie back when it was part of the round-robin format and you could have ties. The game was played in Anchorage, Alaska. Bure, Fedorov, and McGillney were one line for the Czechs, uh, sorry, for the Russians. And on the Czechoslovakian team, maybe the biggest name player was Zdenek Seeger, who never really went on to a distinguished career in the National Hockey League. But it was a war. And the reason it was a war is because there was forward checking and there was hitting and there was tremendous skill. And it was one of the absolute best hockey games that I've ever seen. Never mind World Juniors, NHL, U World Cup, Canada Cups. It was a classic. This is anything but a classic. And uh, I, I just can't help but feel that, uh, that hockey fans who really love the game of hockey are being cheated when athletes who are as skilled as these guys on the ice are and they don't really go out and do anything to promote that skill. So what do you do, Bob? I mean, what, uh, what's the answer then? Because I think people in the NHL would like to know the answer too because this is, 
this is in a capsule what's going on in the National Hockey League a lot of nights. Well, you could start, we can, we can fall back and say, well, in the National Hockey League, at least it's on smaller ice, at least there's a red line. Don't take out the red line. That's the first step because we've talked about it over and over. The minute you take that red line out and you look for the stretch pass all the time, you're creating a paranoia on the part of the four-checking team. They're afraid to send two men in because one pass will beat two men. They're afraid to send three men into the offensive zone because one pass can beat three men. So you can't take the red line out. It's not conducive to more offensive hockey. It's exactly the opposite. It promotes defensive hockey. We're seeing that in spades here. And we've talked over and over again about the international size ice. That extra room in the corners, that extra room on the width, just means that the defensemen are leery of going over there. And when they do that, they just back up and say, come to us, we'll play you inside the dots. The face-off dots don't change in a hockey rink, international or North American size. And the defensemen are smart and they say, I'm not going to go outside the dots because now I'm in foreign territory. So you play inside the dots and that just means the defensemen allow the forwards to come to them again. It decreases the amount of conflict, decreases the amount of contact, and it decreases the amount of excitement. Well, Bob, all I can say is thank goodness there's a shootout because our plane is leaving tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. and these guys might never score a goal. <laughs> we'll be back with more from the 2000 World Junior Hockey Championship on TSN right after this. It's time for all Canadians to make a commitment to better our hockey programs. Esquire and the Canadian Hockey Association are working together to develop minor hockey in Canada. One dollar from each Esquire watch sold between October and March will go directly to the sponsorship and growth of minor hockey. Check out tsn.ca slash ESQ or your participating Esquire dealer. Tell us about your team of superstars. They could receive Bauer merchandise and be the next team Esquire stars to say... We play the same, but we sweat differently. We've got different body chemistry. That's why Secret's pH Balance with dryness ingredients that work with the way we sweat. Hey, it's strong enough for those guys, but it's made for us. <laughs> Hey, look, there's George saying hello to his favorite server. Hello. The usual? Yes, please. You just ordered? Oh, let me guess. Poppy seed bagel toasted and Vim coffee double-double. He's sitting down. First table, second seat. Hello, fellas. All our bagels are baked fresh daily. Enjoy your favorite with a medium coffee for just $1.59. So, Doug, how's your cinnamon raisin bagel? Good. And Jason, your coffee? Uh... I mean, black coffee. Two sugars. <laughs> playing hockey because of how intense the game is and especially at the international level uh, the game is so intense and so fast and uh, you never know what can happen in the game of hockey it's, uh, it's all uh, it's all in your hands and all in your team's hands and uh, that's the, I think that's the best part of playing this game. Uh, my hockey hero is Adam Graves uh, you know, I met him when I was a kid and he's become he's such a great player you know he's a leader on the, on the New York Rangers he's won two Stanley Cups and and not only is he a great player, he's also a great person. To play for Team Canada is a great experience. Um, it's, uh, it means a lot uh, to me, and I'm sure it means a lot to my family also. It's something that I've had dreams about doing ever since I was a kid, watching World Team growing up. And, and it means the world. It's, it's hard to explain really what it means. with the rocket to reach the U.S. Use buck a call and save without switching. It's just a buck for every 10 minutes or less. Any time to anywhere in the U.S. Just dial 101-5566, then one, then the number. Dial 101-5566 to save without switching. Very smart, smart. Prepare to launch. Don't tell me he's launching us. He's launching us. I asked you not to tell me that.
It's a Canadian game. Three years ago, my IT guys told me there'd be two kinds of businesses. Those with a vision to master the internet, and those without. And we didn't want to be the second kind. So we called Dell. Dell came to see us and showed us how to use the internet for direct relationships with our customers, suppliers, everyone who's a part of our business. With Dell's support, there's no limit to where we can go. We always knew we needed the internet. We just didn't know how badly. Be direct, Dell. Dell servers use Intel Pentium 3 processors. A Whopper has 40 grams of fat, but Subway has seven delicious sandwiches with six grams of fat or less. To burn off those calories from that additional fat, you'd have to do 1,785 jumping jacks. Subway, it's the way a sandwich should be. Good afternoon, everybody. Bill Belichick has really pulled a shocker today. He has resigned as the head coach of the New York Jets one day after being his uh, named replacement by Bill Parcells. I know the commitment that needs to be made um, to run this team in, in the circumstances that, that it's in right now. And it's a strong commitment. It's one that Bill talked about yesterday about um, looking at yourself and, and knowing what you can do and realizing what you can do and, and being honest about it. And I just don't feel at this time that I can lead the Jets with the 100% conviction that I need to into the future, in, into the year 2000. When I thought about it was, was Monday morning when it hit, and the scenario that was, uh, that was in place then was, was the scenario that I considered. And I took Bill's words to heart. Uh, I, I spent last night thinking about it, today on the, you know, so forth, on a treadmill and all that. And I mean, I just, that, that's kind of what happened. I, there's a hundred different things that could have happened. Had any of them gone differently, I, I don't know. I haven't really given it much thought. Belichick went on to say that the instability of the franchise was also a reason why he decided not to take the job. Also coming up on Sports Desk today, all the action from the final day of the World Junior Tournament. Canada beat the United States 4-3 in a shootout to take home the bronze medal. We'll have a complete Blazers-Raptors preview. Damon Stoudemire returns to Toronto for the first time since going to Portland. And our Mr. Sub numbers look at the upcoming PGA season. It kicks off this weekend with the Mercedes Championships at Kapalua Golf Club on the island of Maui in Hawaii. Philadelphia Flyers Captain Eric Lindros received a uh, bloody nose when a car driven by his girlfriend ran off the road on New Year's Day. And Roger Nielsen, head coach of the Flyers, says he wants to be an assistant to Pat Quinn at the upcoming uh, NHL All-Star game in Toronto later on in February. Nielsen, of course, is taking chemotherapy to fight cancer. That's all for now. More hockey is coming up. For six seasons, we've brought you the biggest names in the game. Join Brett Lindros for the show that brings you closer to the players. Be a player 2000. See it. Live it. TSN. It seems that the first rule of business today is to be an e-business. The second rule is to work with a company who pioneered the direct way of using the Internet as a business tool. Dell built their business around this direct model, which made them a forerunner in e-business. They provided the equipment we needed to use the Internet to establish one-to-one -one relationships with our customers. With Dell's help, we're breaking down the walls between our ideas and reality. Be direct. Dell. Dell workstations use Intel Pentium 3 processors. That's what they're playing for, the gold medal, and we've been harping the entire game about the, the lack of intensity, or I don't know if intensity is fair, but 
certainly to put it to put it simply the boring hockey we've been watching for three periods and hopefully that'll change in the overtime but you know what uh, the bottom line is the players are going to say yeah I don't care if it's boring so what we won the gold baby and that's what it's all about we've got the gold medal or we've got the Stanley Cup or we've got the whatever I don't care how we get there well I'll tell you what I just spent the intermission and with a lot of these fans and they are upset in fact people are suggesting as they came to me that there should be a rule against this type of hockey and in fact some of them just suggested why should there be 20 minutes of this type of hockey why can't we just have 10 minutes of overtime so there is unrest amongst the crowd here because they have paid a lot of money to watch boring hockey very boring hockey but we're into overtime 20 minutes sudden death looking for the gold medal goal and Smirnov clears it in if they get through 20 minutes still without a goal scored and then we go to a shootout and that we know we will have a winner declared in someone will score eventually puck cleared in Hayek back after it. Hayek trying to get it up along the boards. Bumped out there by Vizicek, not quite. In over the line, puck flicked on goal there by Vizicek. And it is covered up. Breeze Galov will hold on to it. Just underway in this 20 minute sudden death overtime period. Would you be tempted, Gary? coaching either of these teams knowing the skill and the talent that you have on the bench in front of you or behind you as the case may be for Barobi you have to just just for a couple of shifts say all right three men in deep let's go let's see some some skill and let's see you finish absolutely for the reason being from a coach's standpoint that's an important strategy all of a sudden you get the other team lulled into knowing exactly how you're going to play and so break it up just even for one shift see if you can't get a break the Russians won the gold medal in Winnipeg last year in overtime against Canada. Trying to duplicate that feat here against the Czech Republic. Boot up along the boards, gets it down into the corner. But they're more apt to try both teams to do it on an individual effort. And we'll see when the first team really does get a scoring opportunity in this overtime, whether it's a one-man effort or actually somebody going with it. Puck fired in on goal. Bounces back towards the front. Elevnikov. This guy can handle the puck. Elevnikov. Working it in the corner. Boots comes around. And it comes back outside the line. Well, we had at least three Russian forwards all deep. Well, this line of all of them, uh, Boots and Elevnikov, I've been particularly impressed with in this tournament. They can really work the puck, especially Elevnikov, number nine. Very small, speedy, and talented. You think back to one year ago, it was Canada and Russia in overtime in Winnipeg going for gold. And it was Artem Shiberov, 5-13 into sudden death overtime. Let a wrist shot go that eluded Roberto Luongo. Luongo was outstanding that night. Had 40 shots drilled his way. That one got by in overtime, and the Russians won it 3-2. to two And won their first gold medal ever as Russia in the World Junior Hockey Championship. And it was, in fact, the first gold for Russia or any previous incarnation since 1992 when the Commonwealth of Independent States, as it was known at that time, won gold in Houston. Pico trying to knock it loose. Boot watching his man. Trying to come out of the corner. Nidoros gets it up. Pico fired it. And that was steered aside. Pico suddenly found himself walking towards the slot with that puck on his stick. Lubomov clears it up ahead. Zinoviev digging in deep. Zinoviev back of the net, trying to get it out in front. Fedorov up around the boards, and Lubimov just backs out. Puck cleared across, right down the middle. Puck drilled wide there by Vasicek. Into the corner now. Havilak 
Havilatis Park back in the net. Vazicek working down there as well. Number 22 gets it back to the blue line. Hayek with a shot. That was blocked in the way through, and it comes out. Both teams are taking a more aggressive approach in board checking. Ryazantsev for the Russians starts off. Just bumps it up at center. Athanice and Cobb clearing it in. Athanice and Cobb up there in the forecheck, number 21. Trying to work loose with that puck. And now it's steered up and ahead. Sivak in over the blue line. A one on four. Those don't pan out very often, strangely enough. <laughs> Half an icy cob moving in. Across the top of the slot. Gets a shot. Not towards the corner. Tarashenko moves it across. In front. Zinoviev trying to get loose. Svoboda gets it up along the boards. And play whistle down as the puck Hit someone on the Russian bench. We played four minutes and 13 seconds into this 20-minute sudden death overtime period. 0-0. Zero, zero. Czech Republic and the Russians in a deadlock. And if someone can score, the gold medal will be theirs. Now Peter Svoboda, the defenseman for the Czechs, actually stopped the puck in a rather dangerous fashion. Right in front of his own net. He stopped it with his skate. You'd hate to see... After a disciplined game like this, a goal decided on a fluke like that. If the Czechs can win, they would be the fourth different team to win the gold medal in this tournament in the last four years. Going back to Canada in Geneva, Finland won it in Helsinki, the Russians won it last year. Mariams gets it in over the blue line. Actually hit the linesman and he's on the limp a little bit. Ergo, meanwhile, coming back, cleared that shot in wide of the net. Here's Marius. Starting back for the Russians. And nobody in the forecheck. Have a look! Marius clears it in. Jindra okay. back to pick it up for the checks. Steers it off the boards up ahead. Ergo trying to come in. Works the puck ahead. Vazicek was gobbled up there in the top of the slot. Here's Smirnov. He's got great speed. Drops it back. There's a shot. Point blank rebound there. And Lapin couldn't get his own rebound. Smirnov, another one of the Russian players, like Olednikov, making things happen defensively. You'd almost think if somebody for Russia is going to win this, that Smirnov has definitely had the type of night and tournament that he could. I'd say Smirnov will number nine, Olednikov. Boot up there after the puck. Gets it to Lappin. In for Boot. Yaroslav Svoboda starting back. Steers it off the boards and in. Alevnikov back to pick it up. Alevnikov up for Boot. He hammers it in. Played six minutes of this 20-minute sudden death overtime period. Buck wristed in, and that'll be dropped off. Lubimov clears it down. No icing. Kutlak gets it up along the boards. Duma knocks it down. And away come the checks, led by Civic. Long shot, hit the post. What a hard drive that was from way out. Well, I would like to have another look at that. I, the way that bounced out, I'm not so sure it didn't go in and out, but that nailed the post for sure. In my seventh period of hockey play-by-play -play today, my eyes may be playing tricks on me. It's been a long one. That's fired in and stopped. Well, then again, the goal judge at either end could have been put to sleep, too. Lubima. Flutters one in. That is grabbed, and Schmid will hang on to it. Well, the best scoring chance of this overtime, Michael Civic plays for Prince Albert. 
And he let one drill. Just a long, hard shot. Oh. And there it did. Hit the post ball. Perfect. Low shot. And that was really smoking. Breeze got off. Really didn't see that puck. Which might suggest that the Czechs maybe should start shooting more from that position. Fedorov moving up after it. Safranov clears it back in. Up carefully across center. Hayek clears it in. Half lad along the boards. Tried to work it back. Coming up on eight minutes played at this sudden death overtime period. One thing that we haven't seen, and I expected to see more of it, and that was stick work by both of these teams on each other. But they've actually been pretty disciplined in that department. Schmidke was looking for a loose puck, but he'll head to the bench. Russians will get in a change. In over the blue line, Chris Deck bouncing it up there, goes after it himself. Chris Deck trying to get it around back of the goal for Kraft, but that was broken up. Shadilov starts back. Chris Deck fires it back in. But Chris Deck had Kraft open, but instead they still decided they were going to dump that puck in. Buck tap back up ahead. Smirnov was on the move, streaking in over the blue line, but the pass was intercepted. Tarasenko fires it in wide. And a player is down. That's a Czech player down in front of the Russian bench. Well, I was watching over to that side of the ice, and I didn't actually see anyone even around the Czech player. Looks like uh, Angel Kertstev. Innocent kind of body check, but I just think that it was the way that he fell into the boards. Makes it just a good old hip pointer. Well, as an of you have hit him, and you can see the way he went in, sort of around the, the back of your ribs yeah. and maybe above the pant line where there isn't much protection. One of the few areas on a hockey player's body these days that isn't heavily armored. So it was just a good clean check, and so no stick work involved. Nothing that would suggest a penalty. Off the draw, Boot trying to boot it in, and he has the puck. And breaking out Nidaros, or he was. Kindra gets it up ahead. Here go. Had it roll away from him. Valanda. Got it in over the blue line. There's Eirgel, throws it up ahead, breaking in, puck just fired wide by Pico. Great chance for Libor Pico. He just showed some real quick acceleration and he was in a great scoring position. A little off balance at the time. Hayek gets it up ahead. Pass up ahead, Svoboda shoots. Right on and Rizgalov will hang on to it. Here's Gordon Miller. Paul in Umeå, the fifth place game is over and Sweden has defeated Switzerland by a score of five to two. The Swedes were down two nothing in that game but scored five unanswered goals. Daniel Sedin with two goals and an assist. But fifth is little consolation for the host team. Well, unfortunately, bad timing for the Sedins. They really lit it up against the lesser lights in the tournament like Switzerland and Kazakhstan. Didn't do much against the Russians. Puck tapped out. Holly back to get it. Puck gets by Svoboda. And an icing call on the checks. We play 10.05 in this overtime period. 
again, for as much disappointment as people may have expressed about the Sedins, they're both still going to end up in the top 10 scoring and still have put the points on the board, even though, as you pointed out, against maybe some of the lesser teams, but nevertheless, the points all count. Yeah, no questioning their, their offensive gifts. They're tremendously talented and exciting player. I think the concern has to be that this is two years in a row now at this tournament where they fail to to dominate in the big games. Well, defensive coverage by some of these teams makes it very difficult for any player, even the great offensive ones. And going the Sedins found that out when they played against this Russian team. And you go back to last year, which was uh, in Canada and Winnipeg. It was the, the game against Canada in the semifinals. They didn't pick up a point. This year in the round robin, they were shut out against the Russians. And as we recall, though, last year against the Canadians, the, Sw the Swedish-Canadian game may have been one of the best junior hockey games oh, in the last few years. Tremendous game. Tremendous hockey, end-to-end -end action, great skill and great intensity between those two teams. Muratov lost the puck. Here comes Kraft. Back in over the blue line. Kraft gets it up ahead. Cutting it on goal with a chance there. Was Chris Deck, but couldn't get it over to the forehand. He just ended up kind of guiding it in towards the net, I think, hoping for a lucky bounce. And wrong player to leave open if you're the Russians. With Chris Deck anywhere is out there in a scoring position with a loose puck, look out. Chris go off ended up being able to get his glove on that puck quickly enough so there was no real danger but the Czechs have had that puck in close and it was Riaz Ansev who got his stick down there to make sure Chris Tech didn't get a quality shot away Safranov clears it in Kerstev clears it out. He was hit there a shift or so ago. He was the player down on the ice and looks to be okay. Niederost. Looking for a bit of room. Finds just a bit. Gets in over the blue line. And he is smothered there along the boards. Kindra. Got it in, delayed offside in the checks. Up ahead, Schmidtke in over the blue line. Fedorov up along the boards. This is Merriam. Long pass up ahead. Tereschenko had it bounce over his stick. Good job to keep it in, though. Working in, he's got Smirnov in the slot. Zinoviev also up there. Smirnov works it around. Shoots! Way on! That will stop. Tereschenko with the rebound. Tied up there along the boards. Battling with Vasicek. And the puck bumped out. Havilat just tapping it in deep so his team could get in a change. And then he peels back out. Scoring chances in overtime, two apiece. Shadilov getting across center and clearing it in. Hey, X clears it up ahead. And that's an icing call on the Czech Republic. Well, we've talked lots of trap during this game and to follow up with what Bob McKenzie has talked about a lot in this tournament. The red line or lack of a red line, which just creates all of these people up there, folks. I mean, look at the amount of bodies way up there, simply because, as you can see, the Russian players that were situated way up near the blue line when the puck was way back down in the Russian end. Forwards pull out early, and as a result, everyone else has to pull out early, and that creates real defensive-minded hockey. On the bigger ice surface, it's been more noticeable than it was in Winnipeg. Lappin lets his shot go that is deflected out. Melandon back to pick it up. 
Seven minutes to play in this sudden death overtime period. And then we will go to a shootout if the issue isn't resolved. Kraft gets it in over the blue line. Chris Stack. Buck fired in. Holly fired one in that took a dangerous skip by the goal. You know, another long shot, too. I'm telling you, if I were the checks, I would be firing the puck right on net and testing Breeze go off. Just to see whether or not he can see those long shots. He looks shaky on a few of them. Here's Chris Deck. Feeds it up ahead. Knocked down. Breaking through. Niederost. I uh, thought he was going to take a shot, but he's pushed towards the corner. Back of the goal. Pivko trying to get it out in front. That's snipe from the sharp angle by Kersav. And I believe that caught Rizgalov on the mask, judging by the way he dropped. For the second time in his game. It was Kersav with the shot from a sharp angle, but a lot on it. Let's see whether it does, in fact, ring right off of his helmet. Well, he just glazed his helmet, and he dropped quickly. Five minutes and 59 seconds to go in this sudden death overtime. Duma chips it over to the corner. And this is Rhea Zantzad starting back for the Russians. Gets it up ahead. The Czechs doing an excellent job of just clogging up the middle. Kertsev in over the blue line. Works it across. Irgil turns, fires, tipped on goal. That was stopped. It's loose in the crease and knocked out. And the Russians dodge a bullet there. Oh, did they ever. The Czechs have definitely had the puck right in front of the Russian net more occasions in this overtime than have had the Russians. And that one was a dangerous one at that for the Russians. I don't think Griezgalov really knew where that puck was. He was down flat in his back, and he just knew it was in danger. Well, the initial shot was taken by Irgul, and then it bounced out to Kerstev, who was coming in from... Brizgalov's right. And he got that second shot that almost went in. Half an ice and cop. Clears it in. And offside called on Russia. This is not the type of game that Dennis Schmidtke likes to play by any means. He's a very good offensive talent, loves to skate, is a good skater. The big knock on him coming into this tournament is whether or not he shoots enough, and in a game like this, you hardly get the opportunity to show scouts otherwise. He's already been first-round draft the Florida Panthers, but not his style of game. But he has disciplined himself to play it. Svoboda clears it in deep for the Czechs. And again, they will hang back. As a check clears it in, under five minutes to go. And I swear this is about halfway through the third period. The Czechs have had one thing in mind. Let's get this thing to a shootout, and we'll take our chances there. They certainly played that way. I remember in the World Championships last year in Lindenhammer, they switched goaltenders in the shootout. Ivan Halinka, the coach of the national team, really surprised everyone with that move. Puck tapped over the boards there, and out of play. Four minutes, 22 seconds to play in this sudden death overtime period, and then we'll go to a shootout. 
The Czechs eventually won the World Championship last year in overtime, not in a shootout against Finland. That was a great game, actually. Kutlap gets it up ahead. Chris Deck clears it in. Artem Marias carries it out. Smirnov after it. Zinoviev. Squeeze her along the boards. Tereschenko trying to get it up. Here's Marion. Being watched there, shattered by Kraft. Pass up ahead, Sinoviev to Smirnov, and it was just poked out of danger. Tereschenko with a shot wide. That was Kutlak who poked it away from Smirnov. That had trouble written all over it. Zinoviev. Given a bump by Kraft. Puck bounces down. Pivik plays it in. And another long shot that almost caught Rizgalov. I keep shooting. If I were the Czech, step over the red and let her go. You don't even have to worry about doing that. Yindra firing it in. And offside called in the checks. Well, the long shots have certainly been giving Ilya Brizgalov trouble. The Russian goaltender, I mean, uh, the latest one coming from well outside the blue line. It's a good thing that he got at least a glove on that. Yeah. and then directed it, in, in not intentionally, but away from the open side. In fairness, though, those are tough. The, the knuckleballs that bounce about five feet in front of you, you don't know what way it's going to go. Puck pops up out of play. I can't help but think, though, that Yaroslav Holik, the coach of the Czech team, has been saying things to his team Along the lines of shoot when you get the opportunity. I mean, certainly from a cautious standpoint, you got nothing to lose by taking a long shot. You can take long shots for the remainder of this overtime and never have to go into the offensive zone. Rizantsev fought off the checkers for Boda and clears it in. Hayjack back to get it, couldn't clear it. Rizant says, clears it in. Lubomov. Puck flipped up ahead, gloved down there by Zinoviev, but he came in and the call is that he gloved it ahead. Two minutes to go. And this is when both coaches will start to think about who my five men are going to be. For Vorobiev, well, not much question that it's going to be Muratov. Six goals coming into this game and the top goal scorer in the tournament. And for the Czech Republic, of course, no question that it's also going to be Kristek and Kraft, who have scored well in this tournament. Kertsev fires it off the boards and in deep. Kristek moving up, but he'll circle right back. No offensive pressure at this point. Or at any point, really. Fedorov fires it in. Offside is the call. And when we talk about the players that the coaches will select for their shootout, they've really prepared in advance for this because they've had shootout competitions in practice. The coaches really know which players are best on breakaway situations. And interesting that we found out afterwards, of course, and during the shootout, the fact that 
Bo Julian had selected Spezza as his fifth shooter. Yeah. And for the reason being, as he said in the practices, he was unbelievable when it came to the breakaways. This tournament has never been won in a shootout. Esipov clears it up. And that was deflected. Hustling up after it. Schwitke gets it there, back of the net. Afanisikov gets it across in front of the net. Backhanded. Afanisikov lurking there. Took a swing at a loose puck, but it's cleared out. And icing called on the Czech Republic. One minute and three seconds to go in sudden death overtime. That will be four goalless periods in this gold medal game, and then we would head into a shootout. Afanisikov is another Russian player that you can bet will be on that list if we do, in fact, end up with a shootout because he also has had five goals in this tournament. Tereshenko up on the face-off for the Russians. And that's Irgel taking the face-off for the Czechs. Off the draws, and Avyev to Smirnov, shoots! The big stretch by Schmid, and he made one of his best saves of the game at a time when it was much needed. He had to stretch to stop the shot from the speedy Smirnov. Tereschenko, who has become their best face-off man. He was one of their two best, with Duma being the other one. But right off of the draw, they end up getting possession of it. And then once Smirnov, the man with the puck right at the top of the circle, got it, he decided not to work himself in any sooner. He just decided to shoot from that open position. With his speed, he probably could have taken another couple of strides and got into a better scoring position. Under a minute to go. And Merriam to this circle all the way back. And start off. Gold medal on the line. Dying moments of sudden death overtime. Puck cleared down the ice by Vasicek. And icing called on the checks. 32 seconds to go. Here's Gord Miller. All right, Paul, the gold medal yet to be decided, but the other placings have been. Canada finishes third, the United States fourth, Sweden in fifth position. And of note, at the bottom, Slovakia survived barely the relegation. Ukraine goes down next year. Belarus joins the A group. And what a surprise, uh, a negative one for Slovakia. They hit a high last year for their program, having, after the, the breakup of the country, as you get a look at the gold medals, they battled their way back up out of the sea pool, got back up to the eight pool, and they captured a bronze medal last year. And this year, barely escaping relegation. Last year, they were all on the same page, though, and got off to a good start. Buck bounced up into the corner. Running out carefully, very carefully, is Vasicek. 15 seconds to go. Marians up to center. Gets in over the line. Brings it in around the glass. Five seconds left. You know, maybe we just should have gone to a shootout about to three hours and 15 minutes ago and saved everybody the trouble. But we'll do it now. A shootout, the first time ever that a gold medal will be decided at the World Junior Hockey Championship in a shootout. That's coming up. The World Junior Hockey Championship on TSN is brought to you in part by ESSO and the ESSO Extra Card. Swipe the card, win and earn. By Air Canada, proud to sponsor hockey coast to coast. In this country, every day is game day. By Royal Bank Financial Group, building relationships one customer at a time. And by Nike Hockey. Our goal is not to make the player, but to make the player better. Just do it. The gold medals awaits the winner of this shootout.
And the bronze medals await Canada. Already winning their game earlier in a shootout against the U.S. And I say again, it, it's strange. Last year being down on the ice after the game was over and uh, many of the Canadian players were in tears. It was very emotional. They lost in the gold medal game. Not much happiness about the silver. Perhaps now, in hindsight, I'm sure they're very proud of their accomplishments as well they should be. But then this year, you counter it with a bronze medal game and there were smiling faces and handshakes. You win the bronze, you lose the silver. Well, this, without any question, will be the most exciting part of this game. Let's bring in Gord Miller again. Gord? Probably the best reason to watch this game, too, guys, as they uh, do the shootout list. Let's show you the Esquire ESQ players of the game. Not much of a surprise. We've chosen the two goaltenders who, between them, have made 80 stops. And now uh, whoever can make, say, three more will have a gold medal in his pocket. The players of the game brought to you by Esquire ESQ. Unwind. It's time for all Canadians to better our hockey programs. That's why Esquire and the CHA are joining together to develop minor hockey in Canada. One dollar from every Esquire watch sold between October and March goes directly to sponsorship and growth of minor hockey. And you're probably familiar with the format by now. It is uh, essentially a best out of five shootout. Each team gets five shots. You keep going until it's mathematically impossible for one team to win. If they're still tied after the five shots, you go to uh, what is really a sudden death shootout because then it becomes single shot, i.e. you come in and score, the other team has to score in their next shot or that's it. This is a lot of pressure on these two goaltenders um, considering the type of game that they've had to play. Yes, they've had a lot of shots, but at the same time, really not a lot of great action in front of them. So now all of a sudden they're going to be forced to move real quickly. That's Ilya Brizgalov, the Russian goaltender, focusing. And his opponent, Zdenek Schmid. And it's not as though either goaltender right now in waiting can even prepare by talking to the coaches or the players as to how to defend against the shooter because they don't yet know who the shooter is. Kind of neat looking down at the both benches. Check bench looking a little bit more relaxed. They're standing up and starting to link arms. The Russians are all seated, many with their heads bowed, with their, with their arms linked, shoulder to shoulder. And for the Czechs, they're choosing all to stand, and they will end up doing the same formation. The Black Coast. Here's Gord Miller again. Well, on the Czech bench is a man named Zabina Kushi. He's wearing a, a black coat down there, pacing back and forth. He hasn't been there until just now. He was with me up here watching for the first three periods, and he wants everyone in Canada to know that if the Czechs win this game, they'll have won the Olympic gold medal the World Championship and the World Junior in the last couple of years. Something he said would be, quote, the hugest miracle in the history of hockey. He's an entertaining guy. He's actually Dominic Hasek's best friend. There he is. And uh, the uh, World Junior Championship in two years will be in his hometown. And uh, he said that uh, Hasek has been calling him during this game for updates on his cell phone. And uh, so he's hoping for the hugest miracle in the history of hockey. He's a real good guy, too. I've got to know him over the last couple of years, and he's been the one that has been very helpful to me in really dissecting this Czech Republic team. He's also a general manager in the Elite League. Yevgeny Muratov will be the first shooter for the Russians. Home team shoots first. And here comes shot number one. it with a nice move and a great finish on the backhand. Muratov really took his time too. He had his head up. He went, he really faked going to the backhand and then just used that great skill at roofing it. And the first Czech shooter, Yaroslav Kristek. Buffalo Sabres draft pick plays for the Tri-City Americans. Four. 
some discussion with the referee and Breeze Galloff. Here comes Chris Tech. And Breeze Galloff using his size to advantage there. He's a big man, quite a bit bigger than Smeed, six foot three. 200 pounds and it's just a lot of them to get around. He just got that right pad out on Kristek. Kristek tried to go to his forehand side on the deke and you can see how well Green Gallop spread out. Sergei Zinoviev, second Russian shooter. So the Russians Still up 1-0 in the shootout. Second check shooter ready to go. And that will be number 28, Libor Pivko. I think this guy will be tough to deke on because of his size. Here comes Pivko. That's what he's been giving up when he goes down. He is a big guy, and when he gets into that crouch of his, he covers the top corner as well. But there is space between his pads. The good old five hole. Oleg Smirnov, the next shooter, Edmonton Oilers draft pick. He is fast. With a quick shot. I thought he would shoot. He's got a good shot. Well, if he was going to dink, I thought he might come in a little quicker than he actually did. He really slowed down. You can see he opened up his legs and was really just cruising, so he really signaled what he was going to do very early. Arguably the most dangerous offensive player in the Czech Republic, Milan Kraft, is the third Czech shooter. Again, Kraft decided that he also would shoot the puck, like Pipko did. Next shooter for the Russians, number 27, Alexei Tereshenko. It is two to one. The Czechs lead in the shootout, and a goal here would end it. And it is number 16, Zibak Ergal. And the, the Russians, yeah, they're going to change goalies. Peter Vorobiev spotting that weakness as the shooter's head. He takes out. Breeze Galov and brings in the much more nimble Alexei Volkov. Took a page right out of the Czech Republic book from the World Senior Championship. Ergil can win it here. And Volkov with the stop. Now the Russians must score on this shot to stay alive. And the weight falls on the shoulders of Yevgeny Fedorov. No relation, by the way. Here comes Fedorov, Russians, trying to stay alive. And the Czechs are gold medal champions. For the first time ever, the Czechs win gold at the World Junior.
Well, they were just saving all of that emotion for over three hours. All that emotion that they showed after beating USA. They couldn't be a happier group on earth right now than this Czech Republic team. The fourth different country to win the World Junior Hockey Championship in the last four years. The first time ever that the Czech Republic or Czechoslovakia has won gold at the World Juniors. The World Junior Hockey Championship on TSN. Brought to you by Molson Canadian. It's a Canadian game. When the male is in pursuit of the female, the slightest scent of unpleasantness may send the female running. Thus, I recommend Right Guard Clear Gel or Clear Stick. Any perspirant protection from odor and wetness that glides on clear with no flaky white stuff. How far is the female? A good 70 yards, mate. I've made longer passes than that before. Right Guard Clear Gel and Clear Stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. Test your sports trivia knowledge on Tune In to Win with the TSN Playbook. It's your chance to win great prizes. A first-class trip for two across Canada from Via Rail. A trip for two to a Sandals Resort in Jamaica from Air Canada Vacations. An Aptiva 55U computer from IBM Canada. A pair of Laureate watches from Whitnow. Look for your copy in the January 9th Toronto and Ottawa Sunday Sun or in the mail that week. Contest starts January 14th. Hit tsn.ca slash playbook for complete details. McCain wants to give you a chance to win one of five Ford Taurus 2000s in the McCain Take Home a Taurus Sweepstakes. With its power adjustable pedals, sleek styling, and personal safety system, you'll get the red carpet treatment everywhere you go. To enter, send your name, age, and address along with proof of purchase from your favorite McCain product to the address below. Honey, they love you. Get real, Mom. They love the Taurus. The McCain Take Home a Taurus Sweepstakes. Enter today. If you looked into the minds of the Taurus 2000 engineers, you'd see what they were thinking. Power adjustable pedals, a personal safety system with sensors that think about how to activate seat belts and airbags. They were also thinking that a Taurus this safe should be an exhilarating ride. The Ford Taurus 2000, good thinking. for the TSN Turning Point, brought to you by Rayovac. The final Russian shooter of Evgeny Fedorov moves in, but Schmid with the stop, and the Czechs for the first time in their history are gold medal champions. It touches up a celebration unlike one we've seen in quite some time. A cash donation will be made to the Coaching Association of Canada for the training and development of Canadian coaches in amateur sport on behalf of TSN and Rayovac. All the power of the other guys for less. So the World Junior Hockey Championship year 2000 comes to an end with a fourth different champion in the last four years. The Czechs can celebrate a World Junior title to go with their World Championship earlier this year and the gold medal they won in Nagano. For all of us at TSN, I'm Gord Miller. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage of the World Junior. <laughs>
BSN. If you think this is wrong, please show your support and call this number now. Oh, please. Mike's Hard Lemonade, an excellent source of vodka. Princess Pepe, she was kidnapped. It's my duty to bring her home. He came to America as an Imperial Guard. I want to teach you some stuff. Come on. But he's going to go home. A cowboy. You do exactly as I do it. Yeah! Yeah! Ow! Okay, we got to work on that. <laughs> Jackie Chan. <laughs> Owen Wilson. Shanghai Noon. <laughs> Starts Friday, May 26th. Ground base, the wind has shifted. Get your guys out of there now. The 285 horsepower GMC Sierra. Now, fortunately, with a fourth door. GMC Sierra, 365 days a year. There's a new chill in the air. New Excel Polar Ice Sugar-Free Gum. The icy polar blast freshens your breath with our most intense cooling sensation ever. Excel! Excel Radio! New Excel Polar Ice. Tuesday on Global News at 5.30. It's every homeowner's nightmare. Termites. They had weakened the support beams, so they all had to be replaced. Toronto's got a growing termite problem. So that's